How about uh, Devin, he, him in California. Why do people change whether or not they believe in a God based on tragedy? Hello, Devin, are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm with you. Hey, Devin. Hey, Devin. Thanks for calling. You're on with Dave Hi. and Forrest. What's on your mind? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm a little nervous right now. I'm, I'm huge fans of this of this show. Uh, uh, so You're just fine, man. Uh, so don't be heard, don't be nervous. We're just going to talk. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So it once occurred to me that pe that there are people in the world who change their views about religion after after some after a large tragedy has affected them. Like, uh, for example, uh, a person whose whose brother die a person whose brother dies and they are Christian, but they decide to stop believing in God because they feel like it, that it was a tragedy that shouldn't have not happened. But then there there are atheists out there who end up becoming Christians because in spite of the same sore situation. So why why does that happen though? Hmm. That's a good question. That is a good question. What do you think, Forrest? Uh so there's a few things to think about there. Um like right off the bat when you talk about tragedy, you know, bad things happening to good people, right? Mm -hmm. Um you kind of come up to that problem of evil which is something that goes all the way back to, I think one of the earlier ones that I remember is uh, uh, Epicurus, if I remember what it was. He said that, you know, if, where does evil come from in the world? How does he, God not stop evil? He says, if, if God is all powerful, then he should be able to stop evil. And if he's all, you know, uh, all kind and all benevolent, then he would. So if God is powerful and loving, then how can evil possibly exist? If mm -hmm. kind is not, if he is not powerful, but he is kind, then why are we worship it like that? He's he's um, he's a, a, a how do you say it? impotent? He's not going to do anything. If he's not kind, but he is powerful, then he's malevolent. He's allowing these things to happen on purpose. And if he's neither kind nor uh, powerful, then what are we doing worshiping this? What God. is that? Right, right, exactly. Why call him God? And so exactly. that's been a thought for a long time when people look at at, at bad things and especially the the story that sticks out to me the most um is uh the the there was okay so uh in portugal there's this city called lisbon um which is it's on the coast but it's kind of tucked up there's this little little uh river that kind of connects to the ocean there and it's like right there on the edge um very 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 wealthy city back in the day probably still is um because it was a port city. It was a big trading city. In 1755, uh, so you know, around the time that, that we were getting our shit together here in the U.S., um, in 1755, this is a, a super wealthy trading city where everybody goes to to get stuff. Um, and on, I believe it was November 1st, it was All Saints Day. This is a Catholic city in a Catholic country. Huge, enormous churches everywhere. All Saints Day, one of the holiest days. Everybody's in church. And on this day, there was an earthquake. And it is, to this day, one of the most powerful, most deadly earthquakes that human history has ever witnessed. It was about nine point something on the Richter scale, insanely strong earthquake um, out in the middle of the ocean and just comes in and freaking flattens Lisbon. The biggest, craziest, heaviest building, the churches, they can't stand it. And all the people are in the churches. And so these churches collapse and kill like 50,000 people in this earthquake. And also there's a million candles being lit because it's All Saints Day. So the city catches on fire too and half the city burns down. And all the people trying to escape this horrendous occasion go out towards the coast, towards the water where there's big wide open spaces to protect themselves from the earthquake and the fire. And then the tsunami comes from the earthquake and just washes all of those people away. Tens of thousands of people die in one of the holiest cities in Europe on one of the holiest days on the calendar. And that moment sparked a lot of philosophers to start mm -hmm. thinking about this question of, of evil from Epicurus. If God is good and we're doing the things that he wants us to do, what the fuck? <laughs> why, why did this just happen? Where was God? Uh, right, and, right. and this was a big right? thing that sparked uh, the enlightenment. This is where we get, you know, thinkers that that you know came up with 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 the ideals that founded this country and then the French Revolution and many others. These ideas of 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 uh, you know, at the very least, deism instead of theism, and at the very most, probably anti-theism at this point. Um, so yeah, is that, it, it, is that it just, your along your thoughts, Devin? Is that kind of speak to your question? Yeah, yeah, actually, that does. Uh, 
I, I get I get the point, but but then but then the argument still continues to this day. And yeah. uh, there's a, and there's one person who says another thing that's, that debunks what another person said, and then another person comes along and debunks what that person said. Mm. And it kind of stacks on top of itself a lot forever, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, well, I think and that's, a that's couple other examples. A couple other examples that we can all point to is the Holocaust. That mm -hmm. did a lot, a lot of damage to a lot of people's faith. Uh, 9-11 was another one. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that yeah. caused I remember a lot in of people... The... I, I think it was one of the beds in, in Auschwitz that one of the prisoners had carved. If God exists, he owes me an apology. Like, he yeah. has a lot to answer for. And like, that's, yeah. And, 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 and then the other part of that question, I think, Devin, is that we're talking about big calamities that affect um, thousands of people, but there's the individual calamity. Okay. You know, your, your daughter dies in a car wreck. Um, I've known three different pastors my in my life. My dog gets Sick. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I, I've known three oh. different pastors in my oh. life who lost a child in a in a horrific accident. One of them being my brother, and in each of those instances, they they were forced to question their belief, their their faith, because these were faithful men of God who were doing God's will, raising their children in God's will, and then out of nowhere, these. These children, two of them teenagers, one of them a, a younger child, a, a grade school child, were horribly killed, and they had to question what what what's this faith about? I think the reason this question comes into play is that we tend to, in almost all these cases, we're looking at people who worship a God who's supposed to be involved, who's supposed to be there interacting with his people, because if you look at the God of the Scripture. He's a God that's supposed to answer prayer. He's a God that's supposed to lead us according to his will and guide us in our lives and protect us. There's all kinds of scriptures that speak to this. And when that doesn't happen, we have to go, okay, what's something's not measuring up here. So it can cause people who do have faith to question their faith. And on the flip side of it, I think to the other part of your question, Devin, um, there are people who don't believe and then something bad happens. They get a diagnosis from a doctor, and all of a sudden, they're trying to get as close to God as they can because they've got these ideas that there's a God somewhere that yeah. at the end of the day is going to either take them to heaven or send them to hell, and they want to make, make sure they're on, they're on the right side of this deity. Yeah, and that's just you know, the indoctrination uh, right, uh, playing uh, in. Even uh, if you're not religious, you've heard it your whole life. Exactly. Yeah. Go ahead. Devin, you had something to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think I think that's like the what was the Pasca Pascal's Pascal's wager, yeah. yeah. Pascal's wager, yeah. Pascal's yeah, wager, Pascal's yeah. Wager. Yeah, uh, but then but then why does a person pick a specific religion? Why not pick Judaism? Why not exactly. pick Islam? Why not pick Buddhism? I mean, it it just that's, it just just seems why. like that yeah. we have a certain a certain idea of what God looks like in our minds. That's why I think it was Voltaire on his deathbed. Uh, the the priest came in and he said, "Do you renounce Satan?" And he said, "Now is no time to be making enemies." <laughs> <I love> <laughs> well, and I've had I've had personally on my in my own experience. I don't know how many of the viewers don't know that I have a terminal disease. I've been diagnosed with ALS a little over three years ago, and so my clock is ticking. I, I have the the angel of death coming for me a lot sooner than I would have thought. And I've had many people ask me about my fear of death and the end. And I've had Christians come at me, most recently my brother, who actually used Pascal's wager on me. And I just said, dude, you've got to know better than this. Seriously. That's just such a weak argument. But <laughs> but the people the, the know, people right? that yeah, and there are people who think that now that I've gotten this diagnosis uh, of terminal disease, that I'm gonna rethink my atheism and Go back. Okay, God, I was just kidding. Let's talk about this. Yeah, I, you, you can't choose to believe something you don't believe. And once you know, once you have come to the conclusion that this is not real and that God's not there or never has been, I can't put that genie back in the bottle. So no matter well, what kind of, there are there are atheists in foxholes. That's the point. Absolutely. And and plus, like, if you have this, this idea that I'm going to pull one over on the creator of the universe, yeah. I'm going to hedge my, I'm gonna figure hedge out my bets here. Right. Exactly. You think that that 
that it wouldn't notice like it's not gonna plus on top of all of that why would you want that like that's my big thing pascal's wager to me is not only it's a it's a, a silly argument that's easy to think your way out of but also like if that really was the case i'm not gonna worship the god that's like believe i'm real or i'll torture you forever that god's a monster i don't want anything to do with that so mm-hmm. like that's that's really where you these know, things all know, fall down I, to is, I, I, is you're you're either you know worshiping the monster or you're realizing that this this faith this idea is monstrous. Um, you know you were talking about religious people who who have lost children. That was actually a, there was a defining moment for me when I was still I was in my early twenties and I was still kind of holding on to this idea that religions are all beautiful flowers in the same garden and that mm-hmm. there's something to be had there. And and even though I didn't believe in God, there was still something lovely that. And I went to a, a funeral. A friend of mine had a newborn baby that that died in its crib and and no idea why just these things happen and this is you know a, a child that had been alive for a couple of months and we're there at the funeral this is a horrific occasion this is something that nobody wants to deal with and the preacher leading the 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 funeral says uh we should all be very excited very happy that she died so young because she didn't have the chance to sin yet and offend well, God. Yeah, they've and got to I make some excuse, like, right? Fuck that, yeah, that, you, that, dude, that is insane. Oh. Yeah, that's and that, that's horrible. And so many people that are like, yes, absolutely, and that's that is absolutely monstrous. Like that's beyond horrific. Um, yeah. And so you have to look this when when you ask about tragedies, you have to look at every angle of this. It, it's uh, uh, Stephen Fry said this in an interview. It's not just asking, is there a God? It's if there was a God, what kind of God is it? What what kind of God would make a world like this? Only a lunatic would make a world like this. So yeah, it's 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 bad on all sides. It is. It is indeed. Good question though, Devin. I appreciate the call. Thank you for calling into the atheist experience. Yeah. See, it was it, nothing to be nervous about. That was easy, right? Yeah, we're just chatting about stuff. Yeah. We're nice guys. Yeah, no big yeah, deal. I, I, want, I wanted to be a I wanted to be a good guest. Yeah, you were great. <laughs> you were perfect. You were perfect. You, you, you know, you know how you guys, you we've had so far. Some new guys. Yeah, All right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Devin. Take care. Oh man. Take care. I'm giving you a thumbs up. The problem of <laughs> the problem of evil. Mm-hmm. It's important. It's, it's really a big one. It's about. a big one. It's 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 the biggie. It's and the, the Bible biggie. Explains it quite clearly. God says several times that like I create all good and evil. So like mm-hmm. you you can't put it off. You, you know God did this on purpose. It says so right there. Yeah, which it means is. He likes this kind of thing. It is God's problem. Uh, he hasn't mm-hmm. solved it. He hasn't solved it yet. <laughs> nope.